Hi everyone, it's Mandy here and welcome to Inspirations with Manda J. And you're on Yachting International Radio and today I thought I'd do something a little different and talk a little bit about what I've been doing and, and some of the work I'm doing which I think will impact all of your lives dramatically in a good way in the future. So as many of you know, I've been working in marine medicine for 15 years now and my main responsibility is the training um, of the ship captain's medical course. That's what the nickname is. It's called Medical Care at Sea. And it is such an incredible course. Um, I'm also, so I do that. Um, so I teach basically ship captains and crew how to be doctors. And then in the last few months, I've taken on another opportunity, which I'm extremely excited about, which is working with a university to present the marine medicine course and extreme sports medicine course, teaching doctors, nurses and paramedics to be more adventurous and equipping them to be able to go out into the wild, to Antarctica, uh, work on super yachts, go on expeditions, um, the expedition doctors and all those things. And so it's been really cool like being on either side of the fence. Now this is something in marine medicine that I'm extremely passionate about, mainly because I'm from a family of sailors. Um, my brother and sister are yacht captains, my aunt's a yacht captain, um, my dad used to drive ships. My husband was a yacht captain and now has a business servicing the yachts. Um, he's a professional sailor, does lots of sailing on the J class. So are pretty much all my best friends and family. So it's in my best interest to keep people safe at sea. And there's been some huge changes in this field over the last 15 years that I've been involved in. So even 15 years ago, while we were still sort of following the marine orders, it was a lot more relaxed and there wasn't a science behind it, so to speak. So from my perspective, where we get the information for marine medicine from um, has generally come from the military. So I've done work, I haven't been in the military myself, but I've worked for the military. And to get someone back from the goal for Afghanistan to an operating table in London, can be done in like less than 20 hours. It, it's not easy, but there's a lot more moving parts and they're well equipped for that. Now look at us, you know, we can be down in Galapagos, Antarctica, the Northwest Passage, Mid-Atlantic, even islands in the Caribbean, as you well know, are extremely remote. So getting you guys back and organizing the training, the delivery of you know, being able to um, medical kits and supplies to be able to preserve lives, then bringing in the, um, you know, the, the repatriation of victims and, and patients becomes a whole nother level. In fact, there have never been people like us on this earth that travel so vastly and are so remote. And that's why on the yachts, Yacht captains are the only people in the world that are able to carry the degree of drugs they carry without medical degrees. Even most GPs can't go driving around, you know, in you know, with all the medicines we give you guys in their car, and it's for a really good reason, because we have to be able to embrace telemedicine and be able to understand how to use the tools, how to get needles in, how to get IV lines in, how to do sutures, how to do minor procedures, thousands away from, miles from home. And so this is a science that makes me really excited. And I feel like one of the reasons I was put on earth as a remote medic, um, medical nurse and clinical nurse and a professional sailor and sailing fanatic is to bring these two worlds together and basically put super yacht medicine on the map. And this is something I think we need to take really seriously because no one in the world understands what we do and the demands put on us by um, the technology, the thousands of tonnage that are involved in our, you know, in the loads we use, whether it's lifting anchors or um, cranes and getting, you know, tenders on and off boats, whether it's sails and the loads on sails, 
we're using thousands of tons of, you know, tons and maybe not everyone's as qualified and we don't have the occupational health and safety to be driving some of these devices. So, you know, that's where we have a lot of crush injuries and, and major traumas in our industry. Then we've got um, the, you know, the demands put on us by the people we work for, you know, having to get places quickly, um, having to, to deploy sports toys in a hurry. And then the tricky one that we don't always talk about is, you know, being able to allow owners and guests who have paid a fortune to be on our boats, um, the toys to use, such as, say, a jet ski or a sea bob or a submarine, that they may not be officially qualified to drive, right? So there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of secrecy, you know, let's not even get into like the sex, drugs and rock and roll that the industry is famous for, you know, when, if we're working on a party boat and we don't know who's on the boat and, and, and what they're dealing with. So it's a really fascinating area to be in. So in the last few years, you know, we've been getting the, our research from the military, um, from the Merchant Navy, um, and then in terms of tonnage, and loads use basically the Formula One, especially when you're looking at, you know, races like the America's Cup and, and the Vonde and the Volvo where, you know, you've got pro sailors using some incredible loads. Which brings me to another topic as well is that, you know, how do we these days, 10 years ago, we used to all have, everything was just super yacht marine medicine. But now how do you compare a 68 foot racing yacht to a 100 metre motor vessel? I mean, how do we even put them in the same box? And if I had my choice, I would actually be running sailing courses and motorboat courses um, and large motorboat courses because once again, all the wants and needs and demands are so very different. So what I've noticed is now I'm, you know, writing this course at a university level and I'm starting to, I've always been really into the research in marine medicine and I do notice a huge gap in superior medicine. Even when we go looking for the reports, and this is quite a tricky topic because unfortunately for us to make your life safer and improve the delivery of safety at sea and courses such as medical first aid at sea and medical care on board ships, AKA the ship captain's medical course, we have to go through some very sensitive topics, which are the deaths and the injuries of people many of us know, like, and love. And there's not that many reports available. You know, some of the best reports I've found are actually on the, um, you know, available on the internet, but they are few and far between and they don't go into a great deal of detail. Therefore, people like myself that are researching marine medicine and trying to convert it into its own medicine, into super yacht and yacht medicine, we have to start compiling and gathering our own evidence. And at the moment, you know, I've been having to look at a lot of merchant navy evidence and then try and apply it to the super yacht industry. Well, that's another topic that makes it really hard to um, be precise on because unfortunately not all the boats and vessels and companies report their injuries because this can make companies look bad. And so when you start looking at the evidence, it's really interesting. So I was thinking, oh wow, why are there so many accidents on commercial vessels re registered in Antigua and Barbuda? It's because they've reported all. Why are there so many fires and accidents in the engine rooms on the Antarctic vessels that go down to Antarctica as exploration scientific explorers? Because they report them all. Why am I not seeing much information from certain areas where there's a lot of um, oil rigs or supply vessels? Because maybe they're not reporting them. So it gets to be really tricky because we're basically trying to create a science out of an area where we're really lacking a lot of research and a lot of documentation. So what, where are the main risk factors? 
What I found really interesting as I was researching this the other day and um, creating this course for the university, Extreme Medicine and Extreme Sports Medicine course, is that there are so many accidents that happen on a wide variety of ships when life rafts are being launched. I thought that was really interesting. Maybe we're not, then they haven't been practicing enough. Maybe there's not enough literature around it. But in so many training situations, crew members were being injured deploying life rafts. I thought that was fascinating and I think that's something that really needs to be looked at. There were a lot of injuries involving cranes and launching of vessels, which I think is something we need to get really safe around. There's also been a lot of engine room fires and as we know in yachting, there's a lot of fires, a lot of fires from engine rooms, um, from storage of chemicals, etc. How do we prevent that? I don't know. More research, more data, and trying to find ways that we can make it safer for you guys. Then some of the big injuries often came down to not lack of safety and regulations. How do we make that safer? More research, more data, more statistics. So I don't know what the answers are, but I'm really excited about the future of this because in terms of us as a community, and we are a small niche in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but this is our lives and the lives of our loved ones. So how do we make this a safer industry? We, we report our injuries. We invest in 24-7 telemedicine, the future of telemedicine and the need for telemedicine in my perspective is go, going to be huge if you're employing, employing crew members. Why? Because it takes a lot of the medical legal prob paranoia off the captain of the boat and we put the ball in a professional's court. So I really encourage you to look at your telemedicine plans and make sure that you feel safe with them, make sure everyone knows how to use them. I encourage you to take the time to train your crew members that are using these heavy machinery and that are using these new tools. You know, So does the new stewardess on board know how to work the crane before she puts her finger on it? Does the new stewardess or deckhand on board really understand the power of winches before they start pressing buttons? How can we make our world more safe? How can we make it slightly more regulated to save more lives? Is there a question I'd love to put to you and I'd love to see some input in the comments because I for one want to stand for super yacht medicine. I want to be an advocate for it and I want to make the world a safer place. I want to know that when we're out, when we're pushing our boats to the limits, when we're in big seas, when we're using the latest technologies, that we are all safe. So it's come a long way and I'm determined to work with my team to put super yacht medicine on the map. It's extremely exciting being able to take this to a university level because I actually think in the future of yachting, every yacht will have a medic on board, a medical professional being a nurse or a paramedic or even a doctor. So I hope that sheds some light on a few things. If anyone has any input or wants to chat about it, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to talk about this um, and let's make our industry as safe as we possibly can using all the available moving parts, the medical kits, the training, the 24-7 medicine, and also taking an interest in it ourselves so that we know that we and our crews and our families are going to be safe at sea. I hope this has been insightful. Many thanks and I'll see you next week. This has been Inspirations with Amanda Jay.